off right. Um, and can everybody hear me okay? I'm not speaking too loud or too close. Good? Okay, thanks. Um, we all eat oils and fats, and most of us don't realize that a lot of uh, what we're eating is very, very unhealthy. And actually, a lot of oil is quite deadly. So we're going to have a background on oils and fats, the good stuff, the not so good stuff, and the deadly stuff. And we'll be talking about other nutritional basics um, along with that. So, so health starts off. Oh, what we need to eat, approximately uh, 20 to 25 percent of our diet in calories should be protein. Uh, about. 25 to 30 percent fat, and at least 50 percent should be complex carbohydrates. And by that, I'm talking about the vegetable matter. As uh, over half your diet, practically even 70 percent, should be raw uh, vegetables, uh, especially greens, um, raw and lightly steamed. So health begins at the cellular level, and here we have. Just a very, very basic diagram of a healthy cell on the right and an unhealthy cell on the left. Uh, you can see with a healthy cell that there's a membrane that surrounds the cell. This is the nucleus. There's also a membrane around the nucleus. There's lots of little dots here. There's all sorts of stuff um, in each cell. Uh, we've got little organelles. We've got you know all sorts of things that are putting nutrients in and out of the cell and doing all sorts of things. Uh, you'll see in the unhealthy cell on the right that when a cell isn't uh, malleable, flexible, and healthy, it's hard to get the food in, the nourishment in, or nutrients in, and the garbage out. Just like us, just like everything. Garbage in, garbage out. It has to happen. Really, really important that the membranes around the cell and the nucleus are extremely malleable, and that requires oils. So each and every cell in our body requires healthy fats or oils. By the way, is there a difference between fat and oil? Yes. Yes, good. What is that difference? Yeah, we usually refer to the liquid stuff as being an oil, and the solid stuff as being a fat. And of course, the actual fact that all fats. And here we have a closer look at a cell membrane. So this membrane can surround the cell, surround the nucleus, uh, what have you. And each of these little wiggly things, so one of these, we have a bigger diagram over here. They're called phospholipids. And the head, or the round part, of the, um, the phospholipid is hydrophilic or um, it hates water, or excuse me, it loves oil, hates water. And the little tail is hydrophobic. It hates water and loves oil. So they mesh together. You can see that the little heads, the membrane is formed with having um, these little phospholipids upside down, they've got their tails together to meet, they've got their heads to meet, they form this layer that's very, very flexible and movable. And absolutely reliant on oils, healthy oils, to fill each and every one of those phospholipids. You'll see that we have what's called a protein here. Uh, in the cell, you also have lots of what, um, cholesterol and other fats that can look something like that in the cell. I think a lot of us have the bad impression of cholesterol. It, in a nutshell, it's a type of fat. We need our fats and, and cholesterol. Uh, so cholesterol is a type of lipid or fat essential to cell structure and the protection of cell contents. It's integral to the production and functioning of sex and adrenal hormones, vitamin D and bile. Um, and of course, bile breaks down food and fat and so on in the intestine. So it's a small intestine that absorbs most of our nutrients. Fats provide energy and organ protection. They slow digestion. Uh, they 
help regulate blood sugar levels. They're required to metabolize fat-soluble vitamins A, E, D, and K. And they protect bones and organs. They help transport nutrients and metabolic substances. They are important for pretty well every body function, including metabolizing nutrients. Uh, they help slow aging and prevent disease. Have people heard of brown fat or white fat? Is there anybody out there? Does this sound familiar? Okay, oh, super. Uh, brown fat is the type of fat that protects our organs, our spinal column, our blood vessels, and it's, it's basically energy. We utilize that fat. Uh, white fat tends to be the stuff that builds around the stomach. It's under our skin. It's the stuff we want to get rid of. Uh, they say that uh, people with a lot of white fat have inactive brown fat. And um, through thermogenetic, thermogenesis, which is um, the heat energy, uh, it's, I suppose the metabolized, the usage of brown fat um, for energy. There's a lot of fat that we intake that actually goes straight into energy. We tend to think that carbohydrates give us energy, which is absolutely true, but there's also fat that does that. And we'll be talking about that in a few moments. Oh, okay. I think I had um, uh, the slides out of order. So here's a, a few phospholipids, and of course there's tons in each cell, each cell membrane. And we're looking at little bits of cholesterol in there that helps keep things very uh, malleable. So tight, but malleable. Everything, the cells have to move around easily and nicely. And here's getting back to the, what I'll call myth of good and bad cholesterol. Um, LDLs are low density lipoproteins are produced by the liver and carry lipids, fats, um, which includes cholesterol, to different parts of the body. High levels of LDL indicate excessive cholesterol in the bloodstream, which increases risk of heart disease. It builds up on artery walls, which restricts blood flow, which and the clogging can lead to heart attacks or strokes. Um, HDLs, which is considered a good fat, high density lipoproteins, Return cholesterol to the liver for disposal and can remove excess cholesterol from arteries in order to prevent a slow arterial plaque buildup. So it's an indicator of good health. Uh, here we have the molecular structure of fats. So now we're going to uh, talk about a couple of different types of fats. The saturated fat is like butter, lard, it's solid at room temperature. We also have coconut oil and palm oil. That is saturated, and butter and lard will stay saturated or solid at room temperature. When you apply heat, is when they tend to liquefy. Um, and of course, an unsaturated fat, which can be a polyunsaturated fat or a monounsaturated fat, and we will be talking about that a bit more in a couple of moments. I just want you to chemically see what a molecule of saturated fat looks like. It's solid, it's a solid chain. And what a molecule of unsaturated fat looks like. It's not so solid. You've got a little kink in there. It's that kink in the molecule um, that allows the um, fat to be liquid at room temperature or liquid always. Now, a monounsaturated fat is like olive oil where it's fine, liquid at room temperature. Is when you put it in the fridge, it uh, tends to coagulate or uh, become more solid. That's a mono. It has one of these things. And don't worry, folks, it'll get a bit more exciting in a few minutes. I just have to give a bit of a background here. Uh, polyunsaturated fat has at least two or more of these little kinks. Polyunsaturated fats are more unstable than monounsaturated fats. Um, again, olive oil, which is liquid at room temperature and solid if in the fridge, is fairly stable. And we think it's stable to cook with, but in actual fact, it isn't. Um, what will happen, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is the, um, the olive oil actually becomes unstable when it's heated 
and becomes very similar at a high heat to a trans fat, but at, at a minimum, it still becomes quite unhealthy as soon as it's heated. So you want to use all, drizzle olive oil over your cooked vegetables. Um, don't cook with your olive oil. Um, a polyunsaturated fat, pretty well all the oils you see at the superstore, they're sitting there in nice clear containers, um, they look very nice, corn oil, safflower oil, all sorts of seed oils, all sorts of um, various vegetable oils. The reason they look so nice, and I hate to say it, is because they've been highly processed. They've been heated at a very high heat, they've been homogenized, so they're churned like mad, which breaks down digestive enzymes. The heat breaks down and kills digestive enzymes. Um, and they're they're basically turned into a very unhealthy, unhealthy oil. And natural oil should have little bits in it, like virgin, extra virgin olive oil. You'll see the little bits at the bottom of the bottle. That's healthy. Now, the problem with the uh, polyunsaturated fats or oils that we're buying from our supermarkets is that they're so processed, they're literally equivalent to trans fats when we buy them on the shelf. Polyunsaturated oils are extremely healthy for you, and we will be talking a bit more about that in a few moments. Full of omega-6, they're wonderful. But in order to use that sort of oil in a healthy format, it needs to have been cold pressed. And I can guarantee that not one of those Mazzola corn oils or any of the corn oils that you buy at Superstore or Safeway, unless they specifically state cold or accelerated pressed, all those oils have been homogenized, churned like mad, which breaks down the digestive enzymes, pasteurized, cooked at an extremely high heat, which kills all the nutrition, and also turns the oil rancid, or bad. Rancid oil creates free radicals in the body. It's actually very cancerous. Um, hmm, next slide. Oh, I think this is... I was deciding between the two um, diagrams, so if you didn't like the first one, here you go with the second one. Good, here's the third one. So here at the top we have, you know, butter or lard, saturated fat. Then we have a monounsaturated fatty acid. And at the bottom, just a picture of a polyunsaturated fatty acid. So again, it's just more that the saturated stuff is straight, it's solid, and the unsaturated stuff, uh, mono, it's got that one kink, so it's somewhat um, well, flexible and um, volatile, but the polyunsaturated is very volatile as soon as you heat it. Even if you have pressed, say, flax, safflower, um, what have you, seed oil, it actually becomes stale very quickly. And this is something that most of the um, health oils don't state on their bottles. If you buy flax oil, use it within a week. I did talk to Dr. Henry uh, Terry Willard of the Wild Rose uh, School of Natural Medicine or in Kensington, and he used to promote flax oil like mad. Now he doesn't because you ingest the stuff when it's rancid, and it's very, very unhealthy and bad for you. Um, the healthiest oil to cook with is coconut oil. Go ahead, Chelsea. I'm curious, why, why is it so different? Um, in actual fact, coconut oil. Coconut oil and organic healthy palm oil are set, or sorry, the coconut oil uh, is actually saturated fat. But it has short and medium chain saturates in there, whereas butter and lard have long chain. And animal fat, like lard or the fat that's in your beef, is long chain, which is why it's hard for your cells to absorb. But coconut oil, which is a saturated fat, is short chain. Your cells want it, they love it, feel free to use lots of it. It's energy, it's that brown fat we were talking about before. Does that answer, Chelsea? Yes. That's okay. And by the way, these diagrams aren't perfect. We're just, this is just such a very, very basic level. Just because I think it's important to understand a little bit of the chemistry behind the different oils.
Uh, so we talked about saturated fat, which is from animal, um, and including ghee, uh, which is a processed butter, but a very, very healthy type of butter because the dairy is actually removed from it. Um, so feet, fish, beef, poultry, olive oil, and palm oils. But be very careful about palm oil because it's mass produced in southern countries and it's mass produced for hydrogenated oils, which we'll be talking about shortly. It's mass produced to be put in a lot of foods, a lot of our packaged foods, and it's quite unhealthy. Organic palm oil is wonderful. It's like coconut oil. It's just difficult to purchase up here. Monounsaturated oils or fats, mucus, so olive, uh, canola oils, but please avoid canola oil. It's called Canadian oil for good, for good uh, reason, promoted by the Canadian government back in the 50s as the cheap answer and alternative to oils. It's very, very cheap. Most restaurants use it down south in Latin and South America. People aren't using coconut oil anymore. They're using good old Canadian cheap um, canola oil. Uh, tax dollars um, is largely responsible for promoting this stuff. It is deadly after uh, heating it up. It's like a trans fat. And down south, and I'm sure in a lot of our restaurants up here, people are reusing the same oil over and over. And we will be talking about that a bit more in just a few slides. Uh, so polyunsaturated fats, uh, seed nut oil, sesame, hemp, pumpkin, soybean, flax, sunflower, peanut, almond, safflower, coin, corn. Um, and again, they should be cold or expelled or pressed. Not the typical stuff. Remember, heat, light will make oil go rancid. So the stuff that's sitting in there, the clear plastic in Superstore, that's very unhealthy. It's already rancid. Uh, the only fat that doesn't change chemically when heated, coconut oil, wonderful. Put it on your body. Your body absorbs it. Your body loves it. Do an experiment. How many people get really dry lips here in the winter? I know. Keep putting coconut oil and your lips will keep feeling dry. Then they'll suddenly start feeling really nice. Sometimes it'll take a day or two, even three days. But then your body's absorbing the oil. When you put something on your skin, it goes directly into the bloodstream. When you put something in the mouth, it's being filtered through the digestive system. Olive oil is absolutely wonderful. I recommend you look at the creams you're using. Uh, most of them, almost all of them, will have parabens and a whole host of stuff that you can't read, which means they're chemical and really not very healthy, that stuff's going directly into your bloodstream. And it's wreaking havoc, havoc in our environment, with our children, uh, with our own bodies, with women's estrogen levels, and so on and so forth. Use coconut oil. This stuff is absolutely wonderful as a cream. It goes on greasy, and it takes no, long, no time at all to absorb. It's not like, say, an olive oil, which is also excellent for the skin. Um, okay, so again, at high heats, the chemical structure of coconut oil doesn't change. It's still good for you. Organic butter is also excellent for you. But again, organic butter, just like organic beef, you need to use gra a grass-fed cow. Uh, when you buy regular butter, it's from cows that are fed grains, and goodness knows what. Um, you know, whatever they're fed, we know there's a whole host of things in there. It's very unhealthy. But organic beef, organic butter, your body wants that. It doesn't want too much, because then it will turn into white fat. But an organic butter is a brown fat, and your body does want it for energy. So the trans fat and PUFA or MUFA, polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, connection. So rancid PUFAs promote free radical or oxidative damage, um, exposure to air like heat. PUFAs cooked at high temperatures for a long period of time take on the chemical structure of trans fats. So just think of those deep fryers where you're getting your french fries. PUFAs are injected with hydrocarbons to create trans fats like margarine. So trans fats are actually PUFAs like the stuff we've been talking about that's available on the shelves, and they're the uh, double carbon bonds 
are broken, they're injected with hydrocarbons, and they literally become look, taste like margarine. And they're very, very cheap, which is why we've been doing it now for a few decades. And of course, with the rise of the use of trans fats, has been an explosion in um, obesity, heart attacks, a lot of other things that are related. Inflammatory diseases are directly related. Oh, okay, did we set that? Um, so here's, and this is just, again, very, very simple. But to show you how easy it is for a uh, MUFA, or actually a MUFA, this is a picture of a MUFA down here, because it's only got one pink. You go and heat this stuff up, and, did you see this? It's just a slight chemical difference here. Okay. So you go and you heat up your, your MUFA or MUFA, and guess what? This flips to that down there and becomes a trans cell. So please don't uh, use oils at high temperatures unless it's coconut or organic palm oil. Uh, trans fats are inflammatory. Oh, and I think I mentioned, but I just want to reiterate how easy it is to make trans fats from oil. And they, you've already got this already heated rancid oil. And then to turn into a trans fat, I heat it up at incredibly high temperatures. Um, again, they inject hydrogen, break the carbon bonds. Um, and they're also using nickel. It's a nickel process that's quite toxic. And they also um, inject, I forget what it's called, but stuff that basically makes it smell good. And they do that with canola oil as well, because canola oil is based on rapeseed. And yes, the canola oil has been modified to reduce the acidity of the rapeseed, but there is enhancements made to it. So please avoid. Uh, so inflammation, which is the root of really all modern diseases. So it can damage, even rupture artery walls, causing plaque buildup, which reduces blood flow, putting pressure on the cardiovascular system. Artery ruptures can cause internal bleeding or blood clots that obstruct blood flow and cause a heart attack or stroke. And next. So trans fat replace natural fat. They distort cellular structure. Uh, whenever you ingest a food that is not nutritive, you're basically in the nutritional void. Every single item of food you eat must be broken down by specific digestive nut enzyme. So if you're eating uh, an apple, which has numerous uh, nutrients in it, it takes numerous different types of digestive enzymes to actually digest that piece of food. Um, I don't know if you know, a lot of you know people in their mid-30s who just you know, start to get really tired. Uh, by that age is when a lot of people who are eating a typical North American diet have run out of their bag of digestive enzymes. We're born with digestive enzymes. Our body creates them, but a lot, if not most of the digestive enzymes we need has to come from live, raw food. This is why it's so important, and at the beginning I said at least 50% of your diet should be you know, raw vegetables, especially uh, greens, um, or lightly steamed, because any heat will ki kill digestive enzymes, so when you lightly steam something, you're killing the digestive enzymes of the outer layer, but not all the digestive enzymes. But it's vital that you eat a lot of raw food. And for those of you who may who love sushi, keep eating it because there's tons of digestive enzymes in there. So really, really important that you keep that bank account of digestive digestive enzymes up in your body. Really important to start children eating raw vegetables and eating a lot of them. Um, oh yeah, so when you eat foods such as hamburgers. Anything white, anything refined, your body actually needs to make enzymes to break that stuff down. Because there's no natural digestive enzymes to break that stuff down. The problem is your body turns to the stuff in your bones, your organs, and other tissues that really are vital for life. 
and now it has to be redirected into enzymatic activity to digest food. So the next time you're eating something processed, please think twice. Yes, we all do it, but just keep it limited. And the more raw food you have, the more you'll make up for the bad stuff you eat. Um, okay, I think we know that trans fats are, you know, directly linked to the leading cause uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. And trans fats will increase LDL, the low density lipoproteins which is considered the bad, and decrease the good stuff, the high-density lipoproteins. And remember, your body makes cholesterol. Your body makes a good 80% of cholesterol. The more bad fat you eat, well, your body doesn't have to make as much cholesterol. Um, actually, excuse me, it'll make more of the poor cholesterol, but less of the good cholesterol. And how am I doing for time? I think I'm just about there, like five minutes? Sure. Very good. Um, trans fats also inhibits the body's use of omega-3 fatty acids. We're going to talk about this in just a moment. In part for protection against heart, which is in part for protection against heart disease. Um, and saturated fats like coconut, organic butter, etc. Um, actually enhance the utilization of omega-3 in your body. Your body produces omega-3s once you've ingested omega-3s. And trans fats can actually place fats at the cellular level. Uh, they interfere with body functions and they're toxic. Thanks. Okay. Has everybody heard of the FAs, essential fatty acids? Which means they're essential because you do need to get an outside source. When I refer to our bodies uh, making omega 3s, that's once you've already put a certain omega-3s inside you. So we aren't going to get into a lot of chemistry here, but just really important, omega-3s, every cell in your body needs it, your brain needs it, children need it for development of the brain and absolutely everything. Really every body function needs it. Um, it protects the myelin sheath, uh, you know, your nerves. It, you can live without it. Uh, so EPA, an omega-3 reduces inflammation, helps keep blood thin and flowing. DHA, uh, it's vital for sperm development, vision, brain cell structures, brain development, uh, stress reduction, for, and for preventing depression. And there's lots of studies on that. I know there's plenty of uh, physicians saying, no, 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 but there's lots of studies. There's lots of books on omega-3 alone. There's books on omega-3s and 6s. The best source for omega-3s is fish oil. If you're vegetarian, it's flax. However, the flax must have uh, the right omega-6s and other things in order to convert properly to the EPA and DHA inside your body. And apparently, a lot of vegetarians don't necessarily do that conversion well. So I say to vegetarians, please do fish oil. Um, experiment with the other stuff, but uh, do fish oil until you know. Oh, it's wonderful for skin. Absolutely. Um, both omega 3s and 6s, vital for skin. So, omega 6s, and these are the two EFAs. Um, omega 9, which is in olive oil, is, can also be created in your body, so you don't have to take an omega 9 supplement. Uh, omega 6s, vital for cell membrane fluidity and cell operations. Barrier characteristics of membranes, such as the skin's ability to retain and absorb water. They help control inflammation, platelet coagulation, and the ability of your veins and arteries to dilate and restrict. Um, in actual fact, omega-6 are involved in keeping blood thick and thin. They do both jobs. Um, so boards, black currant, evening primrose oils, quality vegetable seed um, oils, black currant seeds, uh, a lot of nuts actually, and some leaky greens like spinach and cabbage and kale. So omega-6 to omega-3 ratio shouldn't be more than 4 to 1. The problem is in our population the ratio is often 25 to 1. So 25 omega-6 to 1, often are the bad, 
um, omega-6s because once you eat them, they um, get rancid. And the problem when you have too much of the omega-6, both omega-6s and omega-3s utilize the same um, enzymes in your body. So if you have a whole lot more omega-6s from all those vegetable, corn, nut oils, well, that's going to take over, and then your body's not going to process the omega-3s. Okay, so you want to have balance. Uh, two to one is a perfect balance. Omega-6, uh, two parts of omega-6 to one part omega-3. Or four to one. But it shouldn't be higher than a six to one. And again, most people are getting about 25 to one. Most people are omega-3 deficient, uh, severely so. Um, okay, a too much omega-6 can lead to the loss of production of prostaglandins, uh, which regulates everything from nerve impulses to inflammation to body temperature. Uh, some healthy foods, we've got you know, some nuts, some fish. Remember, sushi's fabulous. Once you cook it up, uh, you, won't, you aren't actually getting the omega-3s. Um, you'll still get some, but not a lot. Raw fish, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to put your cabbage. Avocado is a wonderful source of omega-3s. It also has omega-6s and nines. Just keep eating avocado. For all the people say, oh, avocado is so high calories, those are calories that your body uses and wants. So unless you have a severe um, obesity issue, avocado is absolutely wonderful for you. High in calories, but brown fat. You use that stuff. Your body wants it. Uh, foods we are allergic or sensitive to causes inflammation. So remove or greatly reduce sugar, wheat, dairy, factory farmed meats. They aren't healthy. Of course, that includes chicken and factory farmed eggs. They're fed. These things are fed with grains that um, really aren't giving the animals the omega threes that or allowing them to create the omegas, threes, and sixes, but especially the threes that they should be. And I'm just about done. Eat a whole foods diet rich in organic vegetables. Okay, half your intake should be raw, at least half your intake. Uh, eat ancient grains, organic meats, uh, raw cooked cold water fish, and that's important, uh, especially for fish oil. You want to make sure you get a very, very uh, good quality of fish oil. You can buy the $10 kind, but they haven't actually stripped it of the mercury, cadmium, and other um, chemicals in there. Uh, whereas the expensive, and I hate to say it, the $40 to $50 bottles do, usually. Check the label. Um, and uh, I would also recommend switching between, say, salmon oil and an oil that's from smaller fish, because smaller fish ingest less toxins, so sardines, mackerel, and chilies. Uh, I'd actually recommend that over the salmon fish oils. Use that stuff less. Um, so anyhow, eat foods that are quick to digest first. Eat sugar well away from a meal, like half an hour before a meal or two hours afterwards. And you know, eat your have a smooth digestive highway. So eat your carbohydrates first. Then your proteins. Never mix your proteins, just one protein at a time, because it's hard in your system um, to be digesting more than one protein. It's hard in your system to eat a hamburger, because you're dealing with carbohydrate and bread. Um, very, very starchy food and protein, and it you know, makes it difficult to digest. And often the digestion, actually, most doctors' digestion is improper. I saw it. The art of medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease. Voltaire. And it's very true. Our bodies want to be in a state of homeostasis. So, eat right, it really does help. Well. Uh, any questions? We're out of time, but... That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned uh, eating uh, raw or uh, cooked fish. Uh, what about the I heard that one. I've been on the internet for 20 years. It was easy. It's true. I suppose along with that, though, comes bacteria, worms, other things. 
So yeah, there's a lot of very, very healthy raw food aholics. We eat raw meat. We give our dogs raw meat. Um, it's just something I don't think I can do. But I eat a lot of raw fish. I love sushi. So yeah, you're right, absolutely. Uh, but it's also what our systems are used to and what we can take. And most of, because of the North American diet, most people have fairly compromised digestive systems and won't digest that well. The bad bacteria will take over the bacteria. But if you do it, you look healthy, so. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.